can't take it with you, so use it wisely while you can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. We're in Luke chapter 16, which means that we just left Luke 15, which ends with the parable of the prodigal son who squandered the wealth of his father. Now, Jesus tells a parable to his disciples, and the scribes and the Pharisees are also listening as well. And this parable has to do with a dishonest manager or steward who was squandering the wealth of the landowner that he worked with. So there's two squanderings. Remember the prodigal son squandered all of his wealth. When he had that wealth, he got his father's wealth and he thought, I've got money, I'm young, I've got power. Let the party begin and the party began and it went as long as it finally could. But when the party ends, all of your friends leave and uh, your so-called friends. And he was stuck in the pig pen. You know that story, right? Same thing with this dishonest manager. He had the estate that he was managing. The landowner probably lived in another province. And he was in charge of all the revenues coming in and out of these estates, which were agricultural estates. And that's why people owed, uh, rather than money, they owed uh, certain goods. And he was squandering this. He had a sense of power, a sense of identity. Uh, it was good while the party lasted, but lo and behold, he was found out. The estate owner says, I know what you're up to. Let's have an accounting. Uh, I want to see the books. And by the way, you're on the way out of here. This dishonest steward says, what am I going to do to mitigate my terrible crisis situation? So he shrewdly says, hmm, I will ingratiate myself to all those that do business with my landowner, with my master, so that way, once I'm out of a job and don't have any more money to deal with, they will invite me into their homes and I can be with them for a little while while I figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. So that's the setting. Interestingly enough, the master of the estate, not Jesus, I don't believe, the master of the state says to himself, hmm, that was a pretty good move you made there. Uh, cooking the books and then rearranging some things to ingratiate yourself so you'll have a place to live and a place to be with these friends that you wrote off their bill. That's not bad. That's uh, shrewd. And then I believe there's an editorial comment, maybe from Luke himself, maybe Jesus, maybe his words begin there. But this comment is interesting how the children of this age are more shrewd in their own generation with these things than the children of light. And then we know Jesus' words begin when he says, and I tell you, meaning to his disciples, make friends for yourself by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. And we've got to figure out what that is. Dishonest wealth in this passage is actually called unrighteous mammon. Mammon, as you probably remember, is a word for wealth or riches. It's a Syriac word, as a matter of fact, that was used in the day and time of Jesus that Luke brought over into this. And so if you were to look at the Greek, with Bob has a Greek Bible right there, it says mammon in there, doesn't it? Sure does. It's mammon. And so the word mammon is a word for wealth or riches. And that word conveys that wealth and riches are very powerful. And that's why at the very end of the entire gospel, Jesus says, you can't serve two masters. It's either got to be God or it's going to be wealth. It's not going to be both because it's impossible. Because wealth is so powerful. Riches and wealth and possessions are so powerful that they can get a hold of a person. They can get a hold of a person's heart and will and life, in fact. So Jesus says, it's either God 
or wealth? Well, let's just look at three uh, simple points about this uh, gospel lesson. Now, it's a, it's a thorny gospel. It's hard to interpret, but there are some very clear points that we can make about this. And before I make the three points, this is the good news of this passage. God, who is the source of everything, that gives us all of the wealth and the gifts and the influences and the powers of our lives, allows us to use all of those things in our lifetime to help the poor and the needy and to further God's purposes. And then guess what? we actually get rewarded for it in the age to come. So what ultimately doesn't even belong to us, we are able to use during our lifetime in order to be blessed in the age to come. That's how good God is. Do you see how all this is working? Well, if not, just keep listening because I'll try to explain it even further. Well, the first point is, is that God is first. <laughs> God is first. God is the source of everything. Whether people believe in God or not, if God exists, God is preeminent. And so God is in first place. But we're called to put God in first place in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, in our decision making. So even though God is in first place, <laughs> temporarily we can sort of skirt around that. But what we're called to do in this life is to put God in first place in our uh, thinking and our decision making, especially in the area of money, because you can't serve God and riches or wealth. The second point is, is that the Son of God, God's Word, Jesus, clearly teaches that if we generously give in mercy to the poor, the needy, widows and orphans, uh, the crippled, the vulnerable, that we will be rewarded in the age to come by using the wealth that we've been given, whether it's a great amount or whether it's a small amount. And the third point is simply this. Jesus is calling his disciples then and now, the children of light, to be wise and to be shrewd with whatever wealth they have, to make sure that we are using that wealth to help further God's purposes in this world, to help those who are in need. And in fact, we get blessed for it in the age to come. So we can fund our own future for good, a little self-enlightened uh, activity that we have. Well, God is first. Uh, we choose to put God first in our lives. Everything else comes underneath God, every other area of our life. Uh, you know, there's a great story about uh, the fact that we can't uh, take it all with us. Uh, Nelson D. Rockefeller died and he uh, had amassed a great fortune. And at his funeral, uh, people attended and someone who knew uh, one of the team members of Rockefeller decided to go over and ask a very inappropriate question, especially at a funeral. Uh, this person asked Rockefeller's team member, how much did he leave? Because he kind of wanted to know how many millions had this guy, you know, uh, amassed in his lifetime. Well, wisely, the team member said, well, he left it all. <laughs> because he did. He really did leave it all. Rockefeller didn't take anything with him except for whatever he did with that wealth uh, that was good. He left it all. And I'll share another quick story. Someone told me this joke, and I, I, I have to tell you. So this is a, a connected joke. There was someone who was about to die. He had three close friends, and he told each of his friends, here, here's a $100 bill, and on the day of my death, I want you, before they close the casket, to just put that money in there just in case I might need it. So the, the, the three friends at the funeral, before they closed the casket, one friend laid in a, 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 a hundred dollar bill and the other did. And so they were talking about it, but they didn't see the third guy. And they said, well, what about you? I put the hundred dollar bill in. And the other one said, I did too. And what about you? And he says, 
Well, I put a check in there, uh, and 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 if he's going to ever cash that, that'll be fine. So, but you you can't you can't take it with you. And God is first. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And I'm told that that word strength in Hebrew is actually the word for resources. Not love God with your biceps, but with all of your resources, all your influence, all of your powers, all of your gifts, all of your financial resources, and love your neighbor as yourself. And just to put a bow on the first point, the first commandment of the law of Moses, you shall have no other gods before me or in place of me. So God is first. God is absolutely first and everything falls underneath. Well, the second is, is that whether you knew it or not, Jesus actually clearly teaches that we are rewarded in the age to come as we help the poor and the needy and the vulnerable. In uh, Proverbs, it says that the one who shows mercy to the poor lends to God. The one who shows mercy to the poor lends to God. Well, if we lend to God, guess what? God's going to pay us back because God is faithful and trustworthy to pay us back. You may lend to someone that you wonder whether your money is ever going to come back. If we give to the poor and we lend to God, we can always count on the fact that God is going to pay us back. That's in the Proverbs. Jesus himself earlier in Luke said that when you have a big dinner party, don't invite your friends who are going to invite you back to their dinner party. What does he say? He says, invite the poor, the crippled the lame and the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you and then he says for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous there's going to be a repayment for those who give to the poor in matthew 25 jesus is coming as the king at the end of the age there's sheep on one side there's goats on another side right what did the sheep do what did the sheep do? The sheep who were about to enter the blessed kingdom of his father. What did the sheep do, Jesus says? They fed the hungry. They gave the thirsty drink. They welcomed the stranger. They clothed the naked. They cared for the sick. And they visited the prisoners. And Jesus said, as you all did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you actually did it to me. Isn't this amazing? Jesus teaches that if we give to the poor, if we are merciful with the poor and the vulnerable, that Jesus himself and all of those people may even greet us as we enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, just to put a bow on this point, Paul in Timothy says to the Christians in Ephesus, charge them this that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute funds and resources, willing to dialogue, laying up in store for themselves by their good actions, a good foundation against the time to come. That's the judgment. That they may lay hold of eternal life. See, their faith cooperating with God and energized by the Holy Spirit led to these generous good works and they are moving into eternal life and they will be rewarded by them. Well, the third point is just uh, the logical conclusion of all of this, that Jesus wants us to be shrewd and wise with all of the influence all of the resources, all of the wealth that we have at our disposal, however much that is. The amount doesn't even matter because some people have a lot more than others. Some people have a little bit. Some people have very little. But the idea is that with whatever you have, with whatever influences, resources, gifts, whatever your time, whatever you can give to be sure and be wise about investing in the future. I mean, that's what it's saying. Now, this sort of language might be different for us, but I promise you, 
There's many in this room that know about investments, right? You know about insurance, right? There are people who are very astute at how money works in this room. Jesus is saying, be as astute and wise an investor in your eternal life by using your wealth to help the poor and the needy here and now, and you'll be blessed by it. That basically is what Jesus is saying. The thing is, we can actually do that. It's not something that's unattainable, but we have to be reminded. We have to have the motivation. Now, I know to whom I am speaking, and I know that I am speaking to a very generous group of people. Um, however, we all need reminders or uh, to redouble efforts. And so this is a reminder of Jesus for the disciples of Jesus, the children of light, to consider what they have been given in this life and be sure to use it as a resource for the poor and the needy in order to serve God. And guess what? We might see Jesus and the poor that we have helped welcoming us into those eternal homes. So serve God, make money, serve you, and enjoy your reward in heaven. Amen.